how to log in to Crossroads ASC uh, in Victoria, Texas. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to type in this IP address that's at the top. Um, the first time you ever do it, it'll say that this site is unsafe. Just click on Advanced and Proceed, and it'll um, it'll bring you to this login screen. You'll use the username that is uh, designed for you guys. Um, so I created one called Tech. Just click Login, and then we're going to do the password, which is Automation. 9 with a capital A and the number 9. So it's going to take a little bit for it to load because uh, we're doing this from a remote connection. So once you log in, you'll have um, the home page, which is basically the layout for the building. Uh, shows all the duct work coming off the air handler and going to its corresponding um, VAV boxes. Um, over here for the OR, you have constant volume boxes and a VAV box for the return. This box right here is always maintaining um, a certain flow into the space and then these are returning a certain amount of flow back to the air handler um, through duct design. Um, all you have to do is if you want to go to a particular zone you just click on one of these yellow boxes or you could do the same thing off the side tree right here off to the left. Um, we have uh, an alarms folder. Uh, we have histories here but you're not really trending anything. Um, but if that is needed, we can always add a trend. Um, right here we have the user tab. We have overridden reports and user reports. So the user tab, to show you right click, right quick, is going to be a little pop up. And this is going to be um, to add or remove a user. So if you need to add a new user, so you just click on new, add one. Click OK. And then you type in the name that you want it to be. So let's say, for instance, um, you wanted it to be um, uh, admin. Um, or you do um, admin1, whatever you want to do. Then you're going to come down here. We're going to make it enabled. Um, we have the different roles for you guys there's just really only one role set up for now so you just click on super um, you would type in the password that you would want right here then you would confirm it then you're going to need to go to right here for the nav file in order to get to the home page you have to you have to get a nav file so you're going to go to files right here there's nav and you would double click on you click that click OK. We're going to keep everything in the HTML HX5 profile. Um, same thing over here. We want to do that for the web view also, which gives you um, multiple different views. You don't necessarily need um, all these sidebars, so that's up to you um, if you want to give that access. And then um, you want to make it auto log off enabled. But let's say, for instance, you set this up and you only wanted it to be a temporary you can go right here and you can click on expire and you can have it expire whenever you want there's also um, if you want you can also have the user um, the password expire or you can do you click right here and force reset on login so let's say for instance you're just setting up um, a username and then a password and you say okay here here's your username and password and then the next time they log in they'll um, it'll force them to reset it 
and that's um, you know another way just to keep everything pretty clean um, so right here for the tech if I want to change the password I just double click on it or you can click uh, highlight over it and click edit and then you can go down here and you could change the password uh, which is what I'm gonna do after this uh, video is done so that way um, it's just something different since I'm talking about it and then once you're done you can just click you just X out and there you go so then let's say for instance you want to go look at um, the lobby which would be this box right here so there's a few things that you're going to want to be looking at when, it, when you're looking at a specific zone let's say for instance it's over cooling or if it's um, or if it's getting warm in the space the one thing you want to look at is you want to look at the air handler and make sure that the air handler is discharging proper temp um, to maintain your uh, your space so right here we have um, the the discharge air temp coming off the air handler itself um, it's reading 53 54 degrees which is about basically what where you want it to be you want it to be around 55 um, now we can do a reset on the uh, the air handler based on space temperature or outside air to actually make your heat kits um, a little more efficient uh, one of the issues is is um, when it's cold outside you don't necessarily need it to be 55 degrees but then you also have the operating room that you have to try to maintain um, so you want to look at this then you want to look at your uh, actuator position the fact that these boxes are VAVs and not fan powered they are going to require airflow from the air handler to run across the heat strips to get proper um, proper air movement and um, and your heating into your space if you see this this orange right here that's telling you that your heat is on obviously and right here is your discharge air temp. So, uh, we have sensors on, on every uh, discharge on every box. Down here you can see um, that we have the zone temp. Then we have the effective set point. So basically it's telling you that it, what it's trying to control between. So the fact that uh, the occupied heat set point is 68 and your occupied cool set point is 70. These boxes that are in blue are the boxes that you can change, meaning that these are set points. So what you want to do is, is let's say for instance you want the cooling, uh, you want to raise the cooling set point a little bit. You just right click, click set, a box up up here here, and you can set this to let's say 72, 74, uh, whatever you like. Then your occupied heat set point. If you want to raise that a little bit um, or drop it, you do the same thing. You right click and you would click right here on set. And then the little screen would pop up and you would make your adjustments. Now, the biggest thing, your occupied heat and cool set point need to be two degrees differential minimum. Meaning that it could be a higher span. I wouldn't suggest anything uh, above a four degree span because if you start uh, spanning out too much then you're gonna have a bunch of um, a bunch of temperature fluctuations throughout your building and you're gonna have a lot of nuisance issues unoccupied cooling heat set points are set up for um, when the buildings are not when the buildings unoccupied in the, in the evenings that way if um, if the heat if the um, the building gets any colder then then the heating set points what it'll do is is it'll bring the air handler on and to move some airflow so that way it can help warm up the building so that way you don't get it too cold um, same thing with the cooling set point for unoccupied um, if the building starts getting above 85 what it'll do is it'll come um, it'll bring the the air handler on and then temper your building back down and then after it's been running for about minimum of 30 minutes to an hour uh, so that way we don't get any short cycling the the air handler will shut back off and it'll come back on based on uh, your schedule 
Right here is your occupied, meaning that if uh, you see this unoccupied, that's telling you that your current state, the box is off. Um, and it'll control on unoccupied versus the occupied set points. So right now we have a uh, cooling set point of 72, heating set point of 68. Right now the effective set point is 68 because it's trying to warm the space back up because it's 61 in the, um, in there in the lobby right now. Also right here on the tag, it says VAV 1-12. So let's say for instance, you wanted to change that, you would right click, bring up the box, and let's say you wanted to name it lobby. Now I would always keep the tag of what the box is, but knowing what the space is, um, will help you guys out uh, later on in the future. So there you go. Now it says VAV 1-12 and it's the lobby. If you want to go back or if you just want to hype, uh, jump to a box, you can do that from right here on the left. Uh, same thing, you can click on this and this will bring you to the air handler. Uh, so let's say the building is getting warm and you're trying to figure out what's going on. One is is you want to make sure that you have your cooling commands. So here's your here's your cooling commands that are enabled. Um, and what these are doing is this is trying to maintain this discharge air temp uh, set point right here a 55, which is adjustable just like your uh, your heating and cooling set points on your VAV. You'd right click, go to set. Always use set, and then you can make your adjustments. So let's say you wanted to make it 60 degrees, you can. Um, here's your duct static. Now if you ever see this duct static at 0.5 or um, anything less than one inch, then you have an issue going on with your, with your fans. And in order to maintain proper uh, cooling and airflow to all the boxes, this has to be at around 1.2 inches of static. Um, right here shows your your motor command, uh, showing that the, the motors are both enabled and the percentage that it's telling it to run to maintain this 1.1, 1.2 inches of static. Um, do the same thing, go to set. You can make your adjustments as needed right here. Um, so over here is the, the side. Um, you don't necessarily need to use this uh, navigation, but right here, if you were to click on this and none of this was popped up, you can click on the arrows to expand, drivers, and then right here is the BACnet network, which is all your equipment that's, um, that's currently being controlled and monitored. Um, so you can also just double click on these and it'll bring you to the boxes. Um, but for the most part, I always tell everybody you don't really need to uh, mess with that. Double click on home and it's going to bring you back to the home page. Um, and then all our files are stored here. It has uh, all, the, all the graphics and everything are hidden in, in this area. So um, let's say for instance, you, you, we can, uh, you, get, you want to check your alarms to see what's going on. You would click on alarms, and then right now we have none, or well we have uh, these two boxes must have uh, went offline at one point, so you can actually double click on it, and it'll give you all the information on the box on what was going on with that alarm. So if you want to, you can click since it's um, if it's in red, that means it's an alarm. If it's green, means that um, everything's returned back to normal. Um, if you click on acknowledge after you've clicked on that, it should go away. If it doesn't go away because it's red, it'll and you click acknowledge, this bell will turn gray, meaning that you've acknowledged the fact that something is an alarm, but um, it's still there, and until um, until the alarm is cleared it won't it'll uh, just stay there so let's say for instance you wanted to look at all your different uh, alarms you can click since we don't have any anymore but you can go to last days last week month to date 
Um, I prefer the time range. It's just easier to kind of get your uh, your entire list to see what's going on, especially with a site this small. Um, you should never really have any alarms, but just a few. Uh, right here is schedules. So this is a hyperlink to your schedules, and this is for the building. Now, <clears throat> give it a minute to load up. So right now the building uh, is occupied from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. We just have it Monday through Friday because um, I just did it as temporary. So let's say you want to change this. You want to make it 4 a.m. or So you just click on it and then you just come right here and you left click and you can drag it up and down to whatever you want. Um, also you can come down here once you're on the box and you can change your times here. Let's say for instance the 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. is what you like. You can right click and apply Monday to Friday and it'll set it up Monday through Friday. Let's say you like this one day. You can copy it and then when you go to another one you can right click on one of these and you can paste it. Um, also if you want to delete all you gotta do is left click then right click and clear the day. Um, if you want to Let's say you want to, um, you want the building to come on at five and uh, and then shut off at seven, but then you want it to come back on um, at a you know a later um, a later time. You could double click. Uh, hold on. Okay, so you go here. You double click and you and you pull down and it'll bring you this. So right now it's uh, this is saying it's unoccupied. The default is unoccupied, so the all the white you see would be unoccupied. But let's say you wanted it to come on for some reason from 12:30 to 3, you just click on that, make it occupied. Now the now it's going to be occupied. And then when you're done with any changes, you click on this little uh, floppy disk in the corner, and that's going to save it. Now, like I said, if you want to delete it, just right click and you can do delete event. And then once you're done, come over here and I'll click the save button and it'll save. So let's do a special event. Let's say, for instance, on you uh, for Christmas, you're closed every year. So we'll name this Christmas. And then we can do a date. So you can do date range, weekday, custom, reference, um, higher, whatever you like. So let's say, for instance, we want a date. We want to say, let's do custom. So let's say the 25th of December, any weekday, any year, this is what we want the building to do. So you would click OK. Now that this is highlighted, you can go here and you can go all the way down so you can make it a all-day event and make it unoccupied once you're done you click save and now you've saved this custom name uh, so you know that every um, every day on the 25th of December any year the building the, the entire building will be completely unoccupied if you want to remove it you just highlight over it Click the X, you want to delete, and then you want to click save. So now that we've done that, that's basically um, how you need to navigate around. Um, you know, go back to your home page. You can actually pull this up on your phone, um, tablets, iPads, um, and all you need to do is just use this this IP address um, and log in and check out what's going on in the building. Um, if you have any questions, um, right here is my cell phone number. You can text me um, or call me and I can walk you through some things. If not, um, you can email me. My email is neil, N-E-I-L, at E-A-S clutchcity.com and um, I can answer any questions from there. So if you need any more uh, information, 
like I said, just give me a, give me a call and um, thank you.